One useful feature of the Sigma Check is its ability to data log. Uh, so to configure data logging, if we enter the main menu, go down to advanced, we have data logging. Now the data logging assumes that the uh, data, once viewed on a PC, will be displayed in a spreadsheet. Hence the reason we have rows and columns. So here we can configure any number of rows and columns. Uh, we have three rows and three col columns currently, meaning uh, nine readings will be taken in total. Again, we have data logging on or off. So I shall turn data logging on. And finally, we can choose to save the data to the internal memory of the Sigma check, the RAM, or to the memory card inside the instrument. The advantages of RAM means that the data can be scrolled back through and any data corrected, but we are limited to approximately 8,000 readings. Memory card, the, uh, the space for storing is practically limitless, so uh, hundreds of thousands of points can be stored, but it doesn't allow you the ability to go back through readings to view or to edit them. So for this example, I shall stick to saving to RAM. So I've configured my rows, columns, turned on data logging, I shall save to RAM. Okay, if I now go back, and then go to the main reading screen, as you can see the bottom pane now displays data logging. The 1, 1 indicates the row and column where the next reading will be stored. If I now take my probe onto a test block, this one being a copper, see we have a reading, now to store the reading, I simply press the tick. So now on the bottom pane, it indicates the value of the reading that was stored, and it's now indicating that the next value will be at row 2, column 1. Uh, the data that's stored is raw data, so it doesn't take into account the precision or the filtering. So if I now whiz through the block, as you can see, the column row count is continually incrementing. Finish on a copper. Which is the last one. Okay, so now it's indicating that logging is full, so I've recorded my nine points. Now, again, the advantage of storing it to RAM, if when I go down to the data logging pane, I can then go left and scroll through all previous values. If any of these look suspect, then I can take another reading and then press in the tick. It'll overwrite the previous reading. If I go back to the last reading and then go right again, I have the option to save. So now I can save that data to the memory card for future analysis and continue with a separate or a new data logging session. But what I should do now is analyze the data on a PC. So I shall connect the Sigma check with this USB cable to the PC. So now if we go to the PC, here I'm running SigmaCheck PC. It's a host PC package that will connect to the SigmaCheck. Uh, it indicates the uh, ID of the instrument, the fact we have a SigmaCheck connected, and it displays live conductivity, liftoff, and temperature information. So just to demonstrate that very quickly, if I place my probe on a copper block, as you can see, it's displaying the temperature, the IAX. And if I tilt the probe slightly, you can see the liftoff incrementing, all in real time. Okay, at the bottom here, we have a retrieve data button, which is expressly for the purpose of retrieving data logged data. So if I click on that. Okay, that's uploaded the data. So now I shall pick a destination. So I shall save it to the desktop. I shall call it simply call it temp1. Okay, now I can open up Microsoft Excel. Any mainstream spreadsheet package is capable of viewing the data. So I do file, open, and on the desktop. The file format that it's saved in is XML. 
So I've now done that. Date modified. Here we have temp1.xml. Again, this is the data that has been uploaded from the instrument. As you can see, we have the three columns and the three rows and all of the nine data points that were recorded. So, and that concludes data logging.